few people today who have for decades, not just months or weeks or years, but decades, responded to the call for action, devoted their time and energy, and utilized all the tools and talents at their disposal to advocate for a full cleanup of the asphalt contamination to protect the community and the environment. We honor these brave and tenacious individuals, community members and elected to life, because it's only through the steadfast, continuous effort of dedicated people that the fight for a cleanup to background can be won. And you guys, I'd just like to point out real quick, I forgot to write this down, but we have a lot of influence. So uh, the two uh, former elected officials that we will be um, awarding today, it takes some very real courage, very personal repercussions uh, about your potential career. And so this is true bravery. So our first award is for the Santa Susana Field Lab Environmental Legacy Award. And it goes to someone who you know and we all love. Her passion for protecting the environment is former Ventura County Supervisor Linda Parks. <laughs> Linda served as a strong champion for the Escobar cleanup on the board for 19 years and prior as a Thousand Oaks City Council member. Early on, Linda's advocacy helped save Amundsen Ranch, currently known as the Upper Las Virginas Canyon Open Space Preserve, from a planned $2 billion development. She saved that space for us. Revelations about perchlorate in the groundwater and other contaminants from the Santa Susana Field Lab in that area were instrumental in this her incredible environmental victory that not only protected would-be residents of the development, but endangered species such as the California red-legged frog. In 2004, Linda successfully led efforts for the county to require any proposed developments in Ventura County located within a two-mile radius of the site to perform soil and water tests for perchlorate and TCE. That's a big victory, you guys. You should clap that one. Year after year, Linda has ensured that Ventura County prioritized the health of its residents over polluters and captured agencies by regularly adopting and expressing a position of support for the full background cleanup. With Linda leading the way, Ventura County waited forcefully over and over again in regulatory and environmental review process and strong support of those original cleanup agreements to background. Uh, time and again, the SSFL community has been able to count on Linda to stand up for us. She has always treated the community with kindness, respect, and compassion. We are immensely grateful for all your efforts on behalf of Ventura County residents, and we are proud to honor you uh, and your service on the SSFL cleanup. Thank you.
and they're going to come out with lesser guidance, and that's exactly what happened. Um, thank you, Daniel Hirsch, for everything that you have done to bring it forward, to keep the elected officials educated, to fight this. It's uh, what you have done is for everyone. It was the first time I ever heard about uh, Santa Susana Field Lab was when I was a mom out in the San Fernando Valley um, and then said, you know, if I'm getting into the elected office, I'm going to do what I can to clean up this. Um, I also want to recognize Mothers for Peace. Uh, and we have a representative here, another group that I'm working with that's trying to decommission the Ottawa nuclear power plant. Uh, again, people are dealing with these multi-billion dollar corporations, whether it's PG&E, whether it's Boeing, and watching the federal government cave. Uh, keep fighting. We know that it can be successful. Um, I admire so greatly the courage of the individuals that continue that fight. And I look around the room, I just see um, Dr. Levin from our public health director in Ventura County and Larry Yee, the head of the Regional Water Quality Control Board. People out there fighting for us and we have to keep backing them and encouraging them. And Dr. Dodge, um, just thank you so much for everything you did. I appreciate this, but you guys are all winners. Thank you. For our next award is the Civic Legacy Award. Um, and unfortunately, uh, former Los Angeles County Supervisor Shayla Kuehl could not be here today, but we are still incredibly grateful for her legacy through decades of service in the state legislation, uh, legislature and the, uh, as a LA County Supervisor. Uh, she played a pivotal role in shining the spotlight on the health impacts of the Santa Susana Field Lab contamination. As state senator, she co-authored legislation along uh, with then Assembly Member Julie Brownlee. And the legislation required that SSFL to be cleaned up to the most protective standards, which we know that word, background. Um, the community uh, has been reliant on her long advocacy and civic work. She championed the AOC cleanup agreements that required Department of Energy and NASA to clean up the background and said, uh, held pass a resolution stating that the Board of Supervisors would sue the DTSC if they violated their cleanups. So we would like to still thank Linda, even though she, I mean, I'm sorry, Sheila. And um, Linda, would you be so gracious to come accept this award for Sheila Kula? And we'll be mailing it to her. It's not up here for some reason. We lost it. <laughs> Increased deaths among SSFL workers, 
exposed to radiation and chemicals, and increased cancers in the off-site population related to proximity to the site. The studies that Dan and I believe Dodge are citing today, they were instrumental in helping us get those done. All the while, the RCC ladies continued to fight for a full cleanup through SB 990, and when, for, and then for the AOC cleanup agreements, the AOC agreements are the connects to background. They protested radioactive waste from going from SSFL to already overburdened EJ communities in Kettleman Hills and Baton Rouge. They participated in countless agency meetings, countless hearings, committees, panels, media interviews, demonstrations, rallies, and vigils. Marie, Holly, Don, and Barbara have given so many years of their lives to this cleanup. They sacrificed time with their children and their grandchildren to attend meeting after meeting, to testify in hearing after hearing, year after year, fighting hard and fighting so damn well. So that hopefully someday, all of us, the people that live here, won't have to worry about our kids getting sick. They did the right thing for so long and the cost was great. We know that. We recognize your incredible work and all that you have given and continue to give to the site. The RCC ladies' stories were captured in a paper that was in part, that was part of the SSML advisory panel in 2006 called Loss of Innocence. It begins with these words, quote, it was 1989, mid-May, when our lifestyles changed irrevocably and our innocence was lost. And it concludes, we still wait and plan for the following, the comprehensive community health study, and an independent, effective cleanup adhering to the strictest standards. It has been a 17 year, at that point, ongoing lesson in frustration at how agencies and government interact with big business. It has been a chess game of strategic moves played out in a form that was surreal to us. It has been a time of fear, uncertainty, and change. We lost our innocence, unquote. And I have to say, for Melissa and I, and many other community members, we feel we need to have lost some of our innocence. We just wanted to protect our families and communities too. We couldn't have imagined when we first started what we would be up against. But while we may have lost some of our innocence, we've gained knowledge, skills, community, and an unquenchable desire to follow in their footsteps and secure the cleanup that will protect all of us. Each and every cancer diagnosis in this community spurs us on. The fight to fully clean up as a never should have taken this time long. Marie, Holly, Don, we thank you for doing the right thing. We may these amazing women continue to inspire all of us to keep showing up, fight with courage and conviction to not give up fighting for the protection of our communities. Please give a huge round of applause for these heroes.
who got us in touch with Dan, and um, our journey began with the Rock Dean Cleanup Coalition. It was a scary journey. Silkwood played on our minds. We checked our brakes when we left like, to drive home. There was a woman at Rocket Dine Hyatt that sat in the back, and every time we said anything, she wrote feverishly. And it was very scary at the beginning for us. But um, we're very grateful for Dan, because without Dan, we would have been completely lost. So, thank you, Dan. Uh, I, just, I just want to give my thanks to Dan, because none of us would be here right now if it weren't for Dan. Dan is amazing. And um, he needed us, and we needed him. And here we are, 35 years later, still trying to get something done. So we've had many disappointments through the years, as you can well imagine. And I'm glad to see the second, next generation came up, and they're going to pick up and keep moving. And we're still back here, and um, we do want this community cleaned up. Too many of us have been sick, including myself, and I know it's from the site, even though I can't prove it. And um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for showing up, and thank you to these women, and thank you to Dan and his helpers and doctor. Thank you, and everybody, thank you. And Linda. Linda. <laughs> sediments if we can't convert this now into action. And I just want to say to those who were just recognized, it is with our deepest appreciation that we thank you for your steadfast leadership and the courage to do the right thing. You are our heroes. In this epic struggle for justice and right action, we follow in your footsteps. We stand on your shoulders. Calvin Coolidge once said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Persistence and omnipotence, excuse me, persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. For many years, in fact decades, we have been ever vigilant and persistent against tremendous odds in pushing for our full cleanup of the San Susana Field Lab. We have pleaded we have petitioned, we have protested, we have demanded that the responsible parties do the right thing and clean up the mess and put behind. But sadly and disheartenedly, our efforts thus far have proved fruitless. In fact, according to the records I've seen, Ventura County alone has declared its official position requiring a full cleanup to background in letters, resolutions, and legislative agendas 14 times since 2007, when the first consent order was agreed to that required the cleanup be done by 2017. And through this long history of advocating for the right action, there is one person who more than anyone has persisted with dogged and unwavering determination to have the Santa Susana Field Lab fully cleaned up, to remove once and for all 
the danger that remains ever present and pernicious at our doorstep. He has always placed service above self, thus he did not want to be recognized when he received an award today. But we would be terribly remiss if we did, if we did not acknowledge his years of tireless service and dedication. In 1979, when he and his students at UCLA uncovered the 1959 partial nuclear reactor meltdown, he had no idea that he'd still be leading the advocacy effort for the cleanup today, now 45 years later. We are forever indebted to the unflagging leadership, mentoring guidance, technical expertise, strategy brilliance, undaunted courage, and yes, the persistence of Daniel Hirsch. Please join me in applauding Daniel Hirsch. This call to action is both a message and beacon of hope. It is the hope that we will be heard and action be taken by our local elected officials to litigate Boeing's final environmental impact report for the Santa Susana Field Lab that was certified by the Department of Toxic Substances Control, DTSC, one year ago on July 24th. Martin Luther King famously said, that the arc of moral justice, the arc of the moral universe, is long, but it bends towards justice. However, it does not bend on its own. It only does so because people pull it towards justice. Rather, it's been 65 years of injustice, 65 years of injury, of indecision, of inaction, of indifference, and insecurity. The insecurity of going to sleep every night, not knowing if the next day cancer or some other serious malady comes knocking. That's the insidious nature of living near dangerous, toxic, chemical, and radioactive pollution. Time does not lessen the potential health impacts. They only become greater. Recently, Boeing has made headline news for its breaches of airline safety. Born of a malignant corporate culture that sacrifices safety at the expense of profits. Boeing is doing everything it can to limit its liability and reparation that would bring some measure of justice to the 346 who were killed in the two 737 crashes. It's the same playbook that they've been using for Santa Susana. Know that there have been more than 346 who have been harmed, injured, taken ill, or died as a result of the toxic pollution at the Santa Susana Field Day. So we ask, how long will Boeing be allowed to drag its heels and shirk its responsibility? While Boeing is a major responsible party, they are not alone in this egregious travesty. The State Department of Toxic Substances Control should be ashamed and must be held accountable for allowing Boeing to skate on a full and complete cleanup of the Santa Susana Field <laughs> To date, DTSC has proven to be ineffective and negligent in holding the polluters responsible. It is clear that Boeing and DTSC have conspired to minimize their plans for a full cleanup action. Worse, DTSC has had a deaf ear to the public they are sworn to protect. For years, DTSC has demonstrated a fundamental lack of transparency and public participation. They have continuously denied and ignored the relevance of independent, peer-reviewed studies that have shown beyond any doubt that Santa Susana Field Lab contamination poses a real threat to the health of those in the surrounding communities. DTSC should have never certified the final EIR. This EIR is so deficient, so grossly inadequate. 
If Boeing implements the secretly negotiated settlement agreement of 2022 as they plan, the EIR will allow 90% or more of the contaminated soil to be left on site. Yes, 90% or more left in perpetuity. Imagine if we just took 10% of the chairs out of this room. Would anyone notice? Leaving 90% or more of the toxic contamination is no cleanup. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I've always been taught that if you make a mess, you clean up after yourself. Or leave a place cleaner than how you found it. Sadly, our government and major corporations have failed to live up to these two simple principles. And in doing so, over the years, they have demonstrated they cannot be trusted. Moving forward, the 10-day campaign that we are starting today is directed at our local, local elected officials. They were elected to represent us, not Boeing, not DTSC. They alone have the power to make a decision that will begin to bend the arc of justice towards San Susana. To the electeds who have joined us today, as well as those who are unable to attend, I say this. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. But once one commits, then providence moves too. Electeds, do not hesitate any longer. Do not draw back from making the right decision. Take action now. We demand that you sue the state over a woefully and inadequate and insufficient environmental impact report. Insist that the cleanup be a full cleanup to background. To do less would perpetrate a 65-year-old catastrophe. Protect our children. Protect those children yet to be born. Protect our precious and beautiful environment. Litigate now. I started by saying that this call to action is a message of hope. A lot of activity at the Santa Susana Field Lab was for the space program. And when the astronauts first went into space and looked back at our planet, they saw this beautiful blue orb floating in space, an iconic image of our Earth. It was pristine. Looking forward, into the future, that is the hope and the vision we want to hold about Santa Susana. Thank you.
let's get this taken care of now so that we don't have to come back next year and commemorate another anniversary of this disaster. Thank you all so much.